Tuesday Church Online. We're really pleased that you are joining us on this Tuesday morning, our last Tuesday morning, our last Tuesday of Weekly yes. Church Online. Um, we're building to the end here. Um, but we're reading Romans this morning. Um, so join us, uh, find Romans chapter 11, and we're going to read verse 11 through to uh, 24. Why don't you read? You yes. read this morning. It says this, Again I ask, did they stumble so as to fall beyond recovery? Not at all. Rather, because of their transgression, salvation has come to the Gentiles to make Israel envious. But if their transgression means the riches for the world, and their loss means riches for the Gentiles, how much greater riches will their fullness bring? I'm talking to you Gentiles. In as much as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I make much of my ministry, in the hope that I may somehow arouse my own people to envy and save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? If the part of the dough offered as first fruits is holy, then the whole batch is holy. If the root is holy, so are the branches. If some of the branches have been broken off, and you, though a wild olive shoot, have been grafted in among the others, and now share in the nourishing sap of the olive root, do not boast over those branches. If you do, consider this. You do not support the root, but the root supports you. You will say then, branches were broken off so that I could be grafted in. Granted, but they were broken off because of unbelief, and you stand by faith. Do not be arrogant, but be afraid. For if God did not spare the natural branches, he will not spare you either. Consider, therefore, the kindness and sternness of God. Sternness to those who fell, but kindness to you, provided that you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you will also be cut off. And if they do not persist in unbelief, they will be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. After all, if you were cut out of an olive tree that is wild by nature, and contrary to nature were grafted into a cultivated olive tree, how much more readily will these, the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? There's loads and loads in the Bible, isn't there, about gardening and plants and trees and branches and roots. I don't know that much about gardening, but I do know about olive trees that you can take a branch from one olive tree and like make a cut in another olive tree and, and graft it in. I don't quite know how that happens, but that that branch will start to grow as part of that other tree that you've put it in as and will become seamlessly part of that tree. Mm. Yes, that's that's the limit of what I know about olive trees as well. But botany is not um, is not my strong point. But hopefully we can still together find some some really helpful meaning in in this passage. What does what does that what does that olive tree kind of fact mean for mean for us yeah. today? Yeah, because Paul Paul here says, it says right at the beginning, I'm talking to you Gentiles. But he's, um, I think where um, the Jewish people perhaps might be the olive tree in this, and he's talking about the Gentiles being grafted in to the olive tree. Um, and and I think the nature of how an olive grafts its branches is that you, you couldn't tell, oh, that's from another, that's from another tree, that one's from another tree, that's an original. Um, so what's being said here is, to the, to the Gentiles, so that's people who weren't Jewish, is that you can accept Jesus and become a follower of the way and God will graft you in and it's it doesn't make it doesn't make you any less of a child of God mm. at all which is which would have been hard for the Jews to hear I think at the time because it was kind of Jewish or or Gentile that was it if you weren't Jewish you were Gentile and you you know, it was a surprise when Jesus came for everyone, wasn't it, for the Jewish people? Because they thought yeah. he was going to be like the Jewish Messiah. Um, but Jesus brought in others into that. And this is what Paul is writing about here, is that God will bring anyone who wants to be, to be part of this tree, to be supported by this root, to, yeah. Yeah. No, that's really, it's really powerful imagery, isn't it? 
I think something that stuck out to me was um, was verse 16 where it says, if part of the dough offered as first fruits is holy, then the whole batch is holy. And I think that the first fruits is representing the Jewish people, that kind of the, the first people to whom God revealed himself um, and made himself known and had kind of amazing purposes through, through those people. Um, but then Paul's almost saying, but... But really, they're just the first bit of one and the same thing, one and the same batch that is creation, humanity in general. Mm. And he's saying if, if one part of that was taken and w- was made holy by God, then all of that can be taken and made holy by God. And for me, as a, as a Gentile, someone, someone that wasn't um, born into a Jewish family, that's... I think that's really encouraging good news to know that that even though kind of chronologically there was those God chose first and those God brought in later, that 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 God doesn't see that difference, does he? He doesn't doesn't treat us differently, he doesn't have first and second class followers. But and Paul says again and again, doesn't he? There is no, there is no Jew or Gentile. There's no mm, slave or free, yeah. no male or female, for we are all one in Christ. I think it means that we get to, we get to share in all the goodness of that, don't we? And and be of hopefully of mutual benefit as as people from different different ethnicities, different races, different backgrounds grafted into this one one olive tree of faith yeah there's a warning in there as well though isn't there um don't don't be arrogant Mm. as easily as you're grafted in you could be cut off um so you know don't yeah don't be arrogant with it be be afraid i think not not afraid and scared but like fear god it's a good thing to fear god to be in awe of god Mm. Um, and and the bit about um, was it verse eighteen? Consider this: you do not support the root. You are not necessary for that root to to thrive and support the rest of the tree. Rather, it's the other way around. That root supports you mm. as as part of the tree as being grafted in. What what are our roots that support us that nourish us? Yeah, I think. As a like as a Christian, our roots should be our our church, uh, being part of a church community, being able to come back to scripture, making time, spending prayer, the stuff that feeds and nourishes us, so that we can actually grow. Yeah. Continuing with the gardening analogies. Mm, very good. <laughs> so we can like... have loads of leaves and loads <laughs> yeah, of fruit. <laughs> yes. So we've got our little um, little snake plant. Hopefully, yeah, it's, to... it's been growing the whole way through, isn't it? It has. It'd be lovely to watch all the way back to the start. <laughs> see how small it was. Tiny. <laughs> I have an olive tree, and it's not very big, um, but it's ma- it's making me wonder if I could graft in, find a branch from somewhere, just mm. find an olive branch, and see if I could graft it in. I don't know how well it would go, um, purely because of my gardening skill, not because the analogy's flawed. <laughs> so, encouragement there. Um, encouragement that, that God brings us into that family, but also warning to, to I guess, to know our know our place almost to not be arrogant about what god has brought us into we're totally undeserving of it yet god brings us into it still yes sounds good shall we pray together god thank you that you graft us in to your family Thank you that you you don't differentiate between the original and the new or the old and the new. But that you invite us to, to join the community of faith gathered around you. Lord, as we're invited in, grafted in, would you help us to invite others that they might be joined in to this, um, to this wonderful thing you're doing?
Right at this time as we're um, continuing to come out of lockdown, we pray for the scientists and the doctors who are working on a vaccine across the world. We pray that a vaccine will be found quickly and safely. That, um, that life might begin to return to some of the stuff that we used to know. We pray for um, just wisdom and um, just bucket full of brains for all the people who are doing that research and that work. And we give you thanks for their gifts. Um, and we just we lift up to you the, all the other healthcare professionals and nurses and um, everyone who's just working to fight this virus. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So it's been good to have you this morning. Matt C will be uh, in tomorrow morning for his last thought for the week. Um, so really enjoy that. They're fantastic, aren't they? Yes. Um, and then we'll see you back here quarter past seven on Thursday morning. We will. Stay safe. God bless. Bye. Bye.